your desire is to always have lots of opportunity in the funnel, you're always gonna ask every person you meet four questions. <music>
if you have tremendous confidence when you say that, if your body's in alignment, if your eyes are you know, in the right place, if you're not like you know, doing this while you're talking to people, you're gonna win. So let's do another one, you ready? I love this one. How many ways can you price a property? So more specifically, when you go on an appointment and let's say that you're competing against multiple agents or just one, you and I both know most agents basically walk in and say, here's the comps, let's look at them together. Then they look at the seller and say, what do you want to price the property at? And, and look, that is a strategy. And when the market's going like this, that's certainly an opportunity. Now, if you're in the higher end or the, you know, call it the second move up price point, you know that that market is not as fast. And, and if I'm in that first time seller market, this script also applies. So here's what I want you to consider. If most agents walk in and say, here's the comps, what do you think? What if you've said, for example, most, uh, most agents offer a one size fits all pricing strategy based upon the comps and the data that we all see. So most agents offer a one price fits all when it comes to looking at the data and presenting it to their clients. What we found, Mr. And Mrs. Seller, is that our savviest of clients wanted options. So we developed the only three price selling strategy that's been highly effective for our clients. So here are the three prices we want to discuss. Number one, you say to me, Tom, find me the needle in the haystack. Yes, you want me to price it as high as possible, right? Looking to find that perfect buyer who's going to walk in and say, I love it. Versus number two, fair market value, where we look at the data and we say, look, buyers are clearly paying $425 a square foot for homes in this area, and we price it basically there. Or number three, I recommend we create a bidding war on your property. Yes, I want to price the property a little below fair market value, call it 415 a square foot as an example, and then guess what happens? Every buyer in town says, that's a deal, that's an opportunity. Every agent in town says, oh, there's Tom Ferry again. He's creating a bidding war scenario, and guess what? We can end up with four, five, six, eight offers on the property, each one trying to outbid the next, ultimately getting you the highest possible price. So I'm not really attached to which one you'd like to do, Mr. And Mrs. Seller. What I want to do is provide you options so you can get more of what you want. So what would you like to do? Now again, a very simple script, and I always think of you know, clients that have texted me throughout the years or called me throughout the years and said, Tom, I did it. I was competing with another agent. I went in and said, I've got three different options. And here's the thing, it was just different. It was different. Everybody else was doing the same thing. When you come in with something different, you create an immediate degree of separation, making you stand out against the competition. Ready? Let's go to the next script. Number four on my list, more for my higher end clients. So if, you're, if your average sales price is lower, you can just, you know, zzz with your finger and just, you know, skip right past it. But listen to this, it's a really powerful dialogue. Mr. and Mrs. Seller, we run a more intelligent, data-driven business. For example, in the old market, right, referring to the old market when the higher end stuff was selling really quickly versus today, in the old market, we would launch the most comprehensive marketing strategy in our area. And the data, the data was unbelievable. We would average 1,500 impressions online. We would get 27 parties through our initial open house and broker preview. And from that, we would produce 14 high quality showings, six second showings, two offers, four counters, and ultimately a closed sale and a happy client. Right, pause. In the new market, inventory is up dramatically, buyer demand is super flat, showings are flat, offers are flat, but what's worse, when we counter, 75% of buyers don't respond to our counter. They simply move on to another property. They simply move on to another property. There's just so many options for buyers in this price range. So the question is, what does this tell you about today's buyer psychology when it comes to this average sales price? long pause, or how should we then proceed when it comes to pricing or responding to offers? Now, here's the point. I know there was a lot of words there and you're going to see them obviously going across the bottom here. The point is in dealing with certain customers, and again, I always think of like the higher end client who, you know, whether they perceive it, act like it, believe it, think it, or you do, 
They think they're smarter, right? They think they know the market better than everybody else. If you can come in with more data, right? More of a, a mathematical approach where you can articulate how you do business, right? There's gonna be a different level of respect from the person that says, look, we're gonna price it, we're gonna do an open house, we're gonna do all these things, and I really love you, and you guys are the best, and oh, oh, oh please list with me, right? I'm trying to give you confidence to create degrees of separation. Let's go to the next one. Number five, um, you probably <laughs> never heard this one before. Another agent said they can get us more. Now, one of our great coaches and longtime friends, Randy Ora, is the first person that gave us this line, and it has been priceless in the Tom Ferry ecosystem. So you're on a listing appointment, and they say, oh, gosh, you know, Brandon, another agent we just met with said they can get us so much more money. He would say, you know, I could line up a thousand agents outside your door. And since we're all looking at the same exact data, we're all going to basically price it, you know, between one or two percentage points because we're all looking at what buyers are actually willing to pay for the property. So if an agent will come in and price the home way up here just to win the listing, you've got to ask yourself, what's their real motivation? What are they really trying to accomplish? The data is the data. The science is the science. What buyers see today is exactly what you and I are looking at. And no buyer is going to walk in today and pay this when fair market value is here. So my question is, what would you like to do? Again, just another dialogue. And I know you're going to download all these. They're going to be right here on my YouTube channel. They're going to be right on TomFerry.com. So you're going to have access to all of this. My point is, this will probably be one of those videos that you're just going to want to listen to over and watch over and over and over to suck in these good dialogues and have them become yours. Don't be attached to modifying or tweaking or adjusting or making it sound more like you. My point is, we don't want to be in the moment of truth not knowing what to say. We always want to be armed with lots of good dialogues so we have confidence, so we, we demonstrate like your attorney would, or a doctor would, or in some crisis situation, heaven forbid, in the ER, you don't want the doctor going, I don't know what to do in this situation, right? We can't be in that same situation. Not when we're talking about buyers and sellers and their most important asset, and you, your business. So let's go to number six. A little price reduction script for our high-end clients. Ready? So you want to start by asking for a meeting to review the process, right? You want to take them through all of the numbers and provide a comprehensive market update. Uh, in many cases, when we're talking to our high-end clients, I'll say to them, you know, when you go back and ask for a price reduction, it's almost like you're going back to relist the house because you're going back through the comps at that level of detail, right? So then you want to say, so here's what we have to decide. Right now, the agents in the marketplace, right, the overall market, and most importantly, the buyers have rejected our price. What would you like to do? What would you like to do? That simple script with a long pause and shutting up afterwards has helped so many high-end clients get $10,000 price reductions, $100,000 price reductions, two or three or four, five, ten million dollar price reductions, dependent upon some of these crazy list prices. So let me give it to you again. So after we've reviewed all this, Mr. Seller, Mrs. Seller, whoever you're talking to, here's what we have to decide. Right now, the agents in the marketplace, the overall market, and most importantly, the buyers have rejected our price. What would you like to do? And then you just shut up. What would you like to do? And you just shut up. And here's the deal. I can, I can think of you know, a thousand mega successful clients in Beverly Hills, New York City, Aspen, Munich, Germany, Sydney, Australia, I know what you're going to say to me, Tom, but my seller, I want to remind you, if they have really low motivation, their price is really high. If they have really high motivation, they don't drop the price down here, but at least it comes to here. So you got to gut check yourself. Why do you have that listing if they don't really want to sell? The world doesn't need another home on the market that's never going to sell. You with me on this? All right, let's do the last one, number seven the four questions that every agent should have memorized and burned into your brain. You might even want to like tattoo it on your arm, put it on your, your eye watch, whatever you want to do. But there's four questions that if your desire is to, is to list a lot of properties, if your desire is to always have lots of opportunity in the funnel, you're always going to ask every person you meet four questions. 
Question number one, you know it. Hey, Brandon, I haven't seen you in a while. What's, what's going on? How you doing? What's new? What's this? Hey, got to ask, have you been watching the market at all? And, and everybody says the same thing. Oh, of course, like what's going on with housing, right? Oh my God, what's going to happen, right? Hey, I got to ask, have you had any thoughts of selling? Have you had any thoughts of selling? And you may notice if you're watching this that I'm smiling and nodding because it's better to nod yes than to do this. Have you had any thoughts of selling? Right, that wouldn't be good. Question number two, one of my all-time favorite questions, are you living in your dream home now? Are you living in your dream home now? And you know what? People will say, I've got no thoughts of selling. And then I say, are you living in your dream home now? They're like, no. As a matter of fact, we like a little more, we like a little less, we like to be a little closer, we want to be in this school district, that school district. And all of a sudden now, there's an opportunity. Then I ask number three, hey, at what price now or in the future would you consider selling? At what price now or in the future would you consider selling? Well, you know, Tom, I mean, if you could get us X, at that point we could rationalize it because we then make the move to Y, right? You're, you're getting them to work through the process versus just be a no. And then the last one is, if all fails, do you know anyone who's thinking about selling? Do you know anyone who's thinking about selling? And a fun one for some of you in the higher end is, do you know anyone that tried to sell in the past and it didn't work out? That's a great question for my high-end clients. Now, I give you all of that with the hope that you will now do one thing, role play. Think about it. How often do you role play? How often do you practice? You know, to me, it's interesting when you look at sports and life and whether it's, you know, my attorney or a doctor or an airline pilot. And I don't know why I did this for an airline pilot, right? A race car driver, maybe that's more appropriate. You know, when you talk to all these other professionals, every single one of them talks about the discipline of practice, right? An airline pilot has to go back to class for two weeks every year, even though they might be flying the same 737 they've been flying forever because they make little adjustments. They want to keep them sharp. They want to keep them fresh. Now, I would argue this, if you're with me right now on this video and you're not role playing, I know why. I know why. It's weird, it's awkward, it's embarrassing, or you're saying, oh, you know, Tom, I don't need to do that. Like, I like to, I like to show up with clients and just see what happens. Well, I don't know about you. There is too much at stake. There's too much revenue to be made and there's too many clients that need to be served by an absolute pro. And what I know is this, professionals practice and that's how they got there. So, I hope you enjoyed this show. Can't wait to see your comments. Let me know if there's other objections you want us to cover. And if you haven't, text me, 949-216-5466. 949-216-5466. Happy role playing. Get out there and get more business. See you soon.